So according to the Cambridge Analytica, what is accessibility? It's some fact to be able to reach, understand, obtain something, right? And we see a lot of accessibility applied in our like day-to-day -day life, like the wheelchair ramps to the buses or wheelchair ramps to the buildings, to some, I don't know, like shops, etc. And the question is, why not make the same for the websites? Why not make websites accessible too, right? And what is actually web accessibility? So the initial definition states that people with disabilities can perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with the web. But after digging into this topic a bit like deeper, I changed it slightly that because I think everyone, it means that everyone can perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with the web. And web accessibility has four core principles. That means that your website has to be perceivable. And that means that all information presented on your website should be perceived by any user. So for example, if you are like hard of hearing or you are deaf and the website has some video content, so the user should be still able to perceive the same information using the video captions. A parable. So, like there are users who don't like to use mouse, for example, or they can't because they have broken the, their arm, so they prefer to use just keyboard. And your website should be operable, so that means that all the actions that you can do with the mouse, still you can reach the same effect just using the keyboard. Understandable, their content operation is understandable in performed and predictable ways. So I think nothing more about that. And robust. So you know like the all like technologies evolve every second, every moment, like people tend to use different devices, different user engines, different browsers. But your content on the website should be still um, should be still like uh, accessible regardless of what, which device your users use. So, but why is it important? Like, why I'm bringing this topic to you? So, I really like this quote from the team Berners-Lee, it's the inventor of the World Wide Web. So, he thinks that the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. And I really support this quote. Because you know, everyone in this room are going to get aged. You're going to have like low vision, hard of hearing, and everyone in this room at some point in our life will need to use the website and we will need it to be accessible for us. So that's why the accessibility benefits for everyone. And a little more statistic, do you know that like 20% of users, of people, sorry, worldwide, they have some kind of impairment. And it's like one billion users. And it's like every six person on the world. Quite significant number, right? And 70, around 70% 70 of users with disabilities, they click away from the website with access barriers. So at the same time, they displace this income like $12 billion to some other accessible websites. So what I want to say is that what we create is useless if it's not accessible. And while we're talking about accessibility and we want to implement it, it's important to know what kind of disabilities can your users have. And there are four common types, like visual, it's people from low vision to the totally blindness, auditory, it's from the hard of hearing to total deaf. Motor mobility, you can have like injured your wrist, broken arm, or you have the paralyzed body. And cognitive intellectual, it's like <coughs> you have some impairment with development skills, with logic, with memory, like dyslexia. And I want you to consider these three persons. Please raise your hand. Who do you think like this of three people has some limited mobility? So raise your hand if you think it's a boy in a wheelchair. 
Raise your hand if you think it's a girl with a broken arm. And raise your hand if you think it's a woman with a big bag of groceries. <laughs> if you raise your hand three times, you're correct. Like, have you had, because like all of them, three of this person, they have either permanent or temporary or situational disability. And have you had the situation when you are like holding some bag of groceries and at the same time you were trying to do something on the phone a bit, a bit uncomfortable, it's hard of using. But I want to, you know, this like moment of like when it's uncomfortable. And I want you to remember this moment because for people with some kind of impairment, this, they feel it all the time when they use the website, which is not accessible. And so the people with disabilities, they use some software and hardware which helps them interact with the web. And this is called assistive technologies. And there is like wide range of them, like it can be bright terminals for the blind users, or screen magnifiers for users with low vision, also eye tracking devices, specific touch screen devices. And also you have, no, you know the Stephen Hawking who had used the really big range of different assistive technologies. And the most popular which are screen readers that's the software programs that people just install on their computers and they read aloud everything displayed on the screen. And the most popular for Windows are the JAWS and VDA and Narrator, <coughs> Orca for Linux, Wiseover for Mac OS and Chromeworks for Chrome, which actually works for any OS. And you know, like this, this the topic of accessibility is very, very broad and it's really easy to get lost in it. So we really need some guidance on this journey, how to implement it. So the World Wide Web Consortium, which is more or less the government body of the web, they created the Web Accessibility Initiative. And they created the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. It's the most popular guideline with the kind of documentation which can be really, really overwhelming, but I really advise you to get through it because it has covered all the important topics which needed to help you to implement accessibility to your website. And how is actually assistive technologies works with the website? How do they help people? So you see we have the application and you know like the web page is transpiled to the DOM tree and at the same time, it's a pilot to accessibility tree. So the assistive technologies like screen readers, they can consume this information from accessibility tree and translate it to the user in, in a meaningful text. So for example, if you use UL analyze element on your page, which are the list. So assistive technology, it will know this is a list and it will just say the user, this is a list of three items. But what if you want to build some kind of the menu? And in the same way we can use the UL and allies tags to build the list and style it a bit. But still like the screen reader will tell that this is list, but we want the user to know that this is like the menu. So wouldn't it be cool to have kind of this attributes like role that we specify that we have the role menu and the menu item. So this is possible through the area attributes. And why area is a specification? They define additional set of attributes that can be applied to HTML elements and they improve and improve semantic and accessibility and add additional accessibility where it is lacking. So area stands for accessible rich internet applications. And as I said, it's just a set of additional HTML attributes and they also have the very rich guide where they describe in details how and when to use these attributes. And so how it, the accessibility tree will look now is kind of adding this augmented attributes and it makes more, more rich accessibility tree and so the assistive technology will get more information from it. So as I said, Array is just a way to add missing semantics. And there are like three types of these attributes can be roles, like menu and menu item. 
states, like for example, if you have the combo box, it can be expanded and collapsed. Also, the properties, they just describe some characteristics of the element. And there are like a bunch of them. But don't get started out. We'll go with baby steps and go through the more core principles which will help you just to make some initial improvement for your accessibility. So the first one, declare the language. All you know this attribute lang. And this attribute is not only great for the SEO or for the translation tools, it's also very great for assistive technologies. So you see I have this paragraph and I added the lang in French. So when the screen reader will go through this paragrapher, it will switch automatically language to French and just will read it with correct pronunciation. Second, use semantic HTML. So all you know these tags like div, span, that widely used, also like buttons, footer, section. So we kind of can divide them to semantic and non-semantic. And usually we tend to use like div instead of button when we want to build the button. But better to avoid this and if you want to build button, use the button tag. So I want you to consider these two looking similar buttons. And if I read the button on the left with screen reader, it will just say search. But for the blind user, what is search? What is the intent of it? Is it a text? Is it some, I don't know, information? Is it a button? What the hell is search? So it's it just because I used the div tag and I added just the text and style it so it looks like a button. And then for a second, it will read search button. And because I just used the button tag. So it's not only advantage of using button. For example, <laughs> when you also add on click handler and you know like for the button, they have already built in on key down handler. So when you do, when you're pressing the space or enter, it will trigger your on click handler. But in case of using div, you will have add additional handlers for the unkey down. So better to use like just what is already built in and is ready for you and better for everyone. And also navigation landmarks. The navigation landmarks is very useful to show organization and structure of your page. Like using nav, like text, main, header, using headings. So the assistive technologies like screen reader users, they report when they first time land on some unfamiliar page. For them, it's very useful to navigate through different sections of the page to get information what is the website about. And they just use this um, like pop-up they open with from screen reader and they can jump, jump to different sections and get information from it very easily. Tab key navigation and tab order. So what is a tab order? The order in which elements are getting focused when you press the tab, it's called the tab order. So you know when you have some form and you're filling some inputs and you're pressing tab, the focus goes like in correct order. And the elements like inputs, button, links, they have this tab order, they implicitly are in this tab order. And they are, this element can get focus. But for example, if you build some interactive element, for example, a combo box and you use a div, but the user who just use keyboard, they still should be able to get to this element. It should be focusable so the users can interact with that without mouse. So for this purpose, and to make the elements focusable, you can add the tab index equals zero. So it explicitly just adds this focusable behavior to the element. And the bad practices also, like using outline known and float right, is for breaking your focus. Let me show you quickly a small um, a small demo. So I have here the three 
paragraphers and as you see I added tab index zero to them. But in real life you will never need to add the tab index to the paragrapher just for interactive elements. So you see I can tab and the focus goes from left to right. And usually what we can do like in CSS for example we want to move some element and if I add float right to the, to the first paragraph it will be the last one. So when you try to tap, the focus goes again to the first one, but it looks like the last one. So the tab order is broken. So never use CSS to move your elements. Use CSS just to style your elements. If you want to move something, just move it in the DOM directly. And also, like, you see the button has also this focus, and sometimes, like, designers can say, like, this focus ring, is looking like not good for the design, it's not matching, let's remove it. And what we can do, like we said, outline on. So when the user tries to tap, this button is in focus, but the user will never see that the button gets focused, so he has no this information. So instead of just removing outline, try to style it and try like to match this, like you always can style your outline, your border, but the user still have this information that the focus is on the button. Like, I style it, it looks ugly, I'm a bad designer, but it's just an example that you always can make changes for that. So moving forward, using area attributes. So here we have again two buttons. We have a trash icon. We can assume that we can, this, when you click on it, it will remove something, but for the blind user, he has no information, and he can only rely on screen reader. And for the, Button on left, screen reader, reads button. Why is that? This time I used button tag, but there is no text. There is, I just added this icon like with styles, and that's it. And for the another one, it reads delete button. Because I use this area attributes. So the, as I said, area adds additional semantic. And for example, I used area label, and the screen reader will read everything that you can put inside it. Fifth, control focus with keyboard. So for example, you have some selectable list and it's like long list. It's a very long list and it's very, very long list. And you probably don't want your users to tap through all the list list and tap shift back. And if you want to go somewhere back to some sections upper, it can take like enormous time. So try to avoid it. Just add navigation with uh, arrow up and down between the list item. And use like tab and shift tab between like bigger sections. So it's more like intuitive way for navigation with keyboard. The sixth one, keep color contrast. There's like standard of the rater for the small text and the large text. But you'll never can remember these numbers, so there are like Many, many checkers online where you can check the color. For example, this checker is from the web aim.org. It's a very great website with a lot of resources around accessibility. They also have this checker. And you see this test failed with the light gray on the dark gray. And I made the text a bit lighter and now the test passed. So it's very easy to check. And isn't it beautiful? Oh yeah, really like it. So always keep in mind the color uh, blindness people, like for example, the green, red color blindness. So for the, this person's text on the left, everything will be just gray. They wouldn't see anything. So keep it in mind, don't put green on red. And for example, for this presentation, uh, you know, like when it's everything like color selection should be done on the design stage. And for example, like for this presentation, just use the background, foreground, and accent colors, just few, few colors which keep this contrast and they are good for everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Testing and tools. Of course, when you implement accessibility, it's important to test it. And there are a bunch of tools for that. And the lot like browsers, extensions, AxWave, and Lighthouse. And you may know that Lighthouse is built in dev tools in Audis tab. So there are like many, many tests that can be run against your website and to check if you uh, comply the accessibility standards. 
And also, if you want to automate your testing and you want to run the automate test uh, on CI during uh, every like merge to master, you want to check if you haven't broken any accessibility things, the AxCore is an open source library which you also can use for that purpose. And of course, some manual work. Like, for example, for the users who are using just keyboard, try to go through your website just with keyboard. Can you perform all the actions that you can do without mouse? And download the screen reader, take a sleeping mask, go to Google, try to search something. How far you can go, just try to feel it, how it is. And also recommend the Snowcoff extension. It's really, really useful to test some visual effects, like some blurry, or for people like with low vision. And for the rest, keep calm. It's a lot of information. Accessibility is very, very broad topic, and as far as you go, as complex it can be. But sometimes don't give up if you can make some element accessible. Like, just try to think what, how you can do it in a different way, how you can bring the same information for the user, but doing it in a different way, and just try to search for alternatives. And remember that small changes make a big difference. When you just uh, replace your divs with button or add additional area attributes, it's just a small chance, but already a big difference for someone. And this is like a resources I really, really recommend to you, but I will share you this presentation later. And the best tip for today is like start all your new project with accessibility in mind, because design is always cheaper than redesign is also usually more effective. And now it's your turn. So I wanted to be aware about it so you can start. And every change you make, it's already a, a first step to make your website, your product, user-friendly for all of your users. So set the standard in your industry and keep accessibility on top of your mind for every project you, you start or any redesign you make. Now it's your turn. Thank you.